if you've never heard of Tuvan throat singing or seen it performed. The first time that you do, you might think that there's some audio trickery at work. But the singers in the band Alash produce transcendent sounds like these solely through the mastery of bioacoustics. <laughs> Tuvan throat singer Badi Dorju Andar speaks softly off stage. Uh, I start early. Uh, four or five years old. You're about to see the first child from Tuva to perform here in the United States. For those of you who don't know, Tuva is a country located between Siberia and Mongolia. And the people there have this uncanny way of singing two notes uh, at the same time. Yes, first time, you know, like not heard tickles, tickle. So what's body's secret? Yes, I listening and try more. Yes, every day I try. It's a bit more complicated than that. Just ask the band's manager, Sean Quirk. So the way we explain it to school kids is that every time we make a musical note, there's lots of notes that are already there. Those are called overtones. And normally we don't hear them as separate notes because they're all blended together. But a tuvin is squeezing for some of those overtones to get louder and the rest to go away. To find out exactly what they're squeezing, you have to look inside. This is Dr. Aaron Johnson, a speech pathologist at the NYU Langone Voice Center. And while he doesn't throat sing, he can reveal how a baritone can achieve soprano pitched overtones. We have two pieces of tissue here in the larynx called the vocal folds, and the air then makes those vocal folds vibrate. Good, so that's, those are the vocal folds vibrating. The speed of which changes the pitch Good, and now super low. Good, and so now we're starting to see a little bit how things compress during the throat singing in those low notes. We get a really small tube down there. But that's not all that changes. By changing the shape of my tongue and my lips, I then create different resonances. Um, the soft palate is moving around, the height of the larynx, we can see the larynx moving up and down as well, um, all to, to change the shape of that tube dramatically reducing unwanted frequencies while strengthening others. At the same time, that space that's inside the larynx, just above the vocal folds, is a very tight constriction. It's probably what is uh, amplifying those, those high harmonics. Essentially, the Tuvan singer is using their throat a little like a sound mixer. By creating different constrictions, you're lifting the slider up on certain frequencies and lowering the slider on other ones. And by using audio imaging tools, you can actually see the two distinct harmonics that are produced by a throat singer. And if I go e -a -a, you can see that we have these different harmonics that are being amplified. But with the throat singer, we have one resonance that's down here that's staying pretty constant. And then by adjusting the length and shape of the vocal tract, a singer can amplify certain harmonics. Throat singers also squeeze and vibrate different regions of their larynx to produce that low, raspy style singing known as kargara. These pink tissues, kind of bulges above the true vocal folds, are the ventricular folds, um, also called the false vocal folds. Those aren't designed to vibrate in a regular way, so you're getting some irregular vibrations with those pieces of tissue that causes that scratchiness, that noise. But just because you can physically produce these sounds doesn't mean that you can master them. For body and I N and I N L, this is just the thing that they grew up in. It's, you know, it's so deeply tied up with culture and uh, with the way different people view the world, and, and uh, that is a worldview that is built on a long, long history of being a nomad 
That means you're very attentive to the cycles of nature. You're attentive to the sounds of nature. People say, oh, it's in our blood. And it's like, yeah, that, that's magical. Don't get me with that non-scientific stuff. But I feel there is a case to be made for at least something like that. A soul to the music that just can't be taught. For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.